June 9, 2020, and my name is Ken Shi, and I'm with the Houston Asian American Archive. Um, this is the special edition of Houston Asian American Archives COVID um, Oral History Collection, uh, where we focus on the life and impact of the COVID-19 to our community in Houston. And today we have um, um, our past participant, uh, Anthony Pablano, um, to speak with us. And thank you very much, Anthony, for coming back to uh, spend your time with us again. Oh yeah, well, thank you for having me. <laughs> thank you. Began by uh, letting me share with us how COVID-19 has impacted your life in general. Okay. Uh, I, I think you said how COVID has impacted my life, right? Okay. Um, so, I mean, first off, I'm thankful that, you know, I'm uh, pretty much unaffected by it overall. Uh, thankfully, I, I still have a job that, <laughs> that uh, during this crisis, you know, I'm able to continue work without any sort of uh, slowdown or any cutbacks in terms of hours, etc. cetera. Um, a full-time employee still. Uh, so I'm thankful for that, um, and I'm thankful that, you know, I did not get affected by the virus itself. <laughs> you know, I pretty much uh, stayed indoors, trying to just lessen my risk of contracting that disease. Uh, like even wearing a mask, <laughs> just in case it's around my neck. <laughs> uh, so, but you know, it's... Being a citizen of the world, it's hard to not be affected by it in other ways. Uh, emotionally, it's hard to not feel the pain that other people are feeling, especially, you know, uh, I have friends and, and acquaintances that I know of who lost their jobs or suffered, you know, like reduced hours uh, if that's the case for them. Uh, and you know it's hard to not see those things, uh, even from a distance, uh, through social media, etc. Um, so even though I'm personally, I have a job that's financially keeping me uh, afloat, uh, mentally, spiritually, it's I'm kind of drained in terms of <laughs> uh, just absorbing so much from the surroundings. <laughs> Sometimes I just have to. Uh, you know, uh, turn off my phone once in a while and <laughs> just uh, not hear of, not read about or not hear about news for a bit to recharge. Uh, but overall, yeah, COVID has been, for our society in general, it's been a, it's been a challenging uh, obstacle for us because many have lost their jobs. Uh, many have lost their lives. Uh, and the emotional and you know just the environment that those two things are causing to every one of us it's <laughs> it's palpable it's hard it's yeah we can feel it <laughs> yeah absolutely um you were talking about social media like what do you think social media has um impacted us in or um kind of influenced us in this pandemic Oh, for sure. Social media is proving its worth in terms of allowing us to, you know, uh, still connect from a distance. Uh, that's one major positive thing about social media. Social media, of course, has its drawbacks <laughs> in terms of being uh, used as a tool by some people, uh, groups of people, uh, uh, in nefarious ways in terms of spreading misinformation, uh, using it to, you know, in inappropriate ways, <laughs> like uh, attacking other people for unnecessary, you know, unnecessarily, or just overall, the main thing is misinformation. <laughs> but of, of course, uh, overall, uh, social media has allowed us to connect during this time where we have to distance and allows us to share information quite rapidly amongst each other. <laughs> Hopefully, you know, fact-checked, correct information. <laughs> yeah, definitely something they're working on now, and we hope we'll see some upcoming um, results. 
Yeah, uh, <laughs> that's uh, true. Yeah, we also see a lot of creativity expressed on social media. And I felt like as an artist, um, you're probably a creature of solidarity. <laughs> also having to um, connect with people. Um, what do you think as an artist, your perspectives has um, changed or been influenced during this period? Oh, for sure. Uh, especially what has happened in the past three weeks. <laughs> since of uh, end of May, um, cul a cultural shift is definitely happening. And uh, I'm happy to see that most of the people in the world are responding in a way, are responding to the call to stand up. <laughs> uh, specifically, you know, I'm talking about, you know, what has happened, you know, what happened end of May where, you know, George Floyd was, uh, killed and the the domino effect that that caused in our society uh, in terms of conversations that more and more people are now having in terms of race in terms of equality uh, in general um, and the you know people you know voicing themselves standing up and the fact that we have social media uh, is great to that effect in terms of, uh, you know, if you have you know, friends or family members or you know, uh, colleagues, et cetera, who are standing up, um, vo voicing their concerns, voicing their support of equality for Black Lives Matter. Uh, it's social media is enabling people to see those perspectives. And uh, I don't know, yeah, you know, from a scientific scientific perspective, I'm not sure, but from what I'm, you know, just perceiving, it's causing a, a positive ripple effect in our society. You know, more and more people are getting aware, aware. More and more people are, you know, having those tough conversations within themselves, within their friends, within their circles, and I'm I'm sure a lot of people are, you know, realizing their faults and realizing. Um, their privilege that they might have had and you know then themselves are then contributing to the conversation of, of pushing for <laughs> more widespread uh, I guess equality <laughs> it's very idealistic in my, my mind but uh, from what I'm seeing uh, it's inspiring that more and more people are voicing out and standing up yeah, and that's social media is enabling that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and Sorry. social media is helping that. Mm -hmm. And so if, if I'm to, is my voice level okay? Yes, it's actually okay. 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 Um, yeah, so as an, uh, thank you for sharing that inspiring note, by the way. It's very empowering to um, that our, all our lives are actually changing as of now. And um, talking about your artistic creativity, can you uh, share with us uh, whether the current movements and the current events have um, helped you to um, or inspire you to create art in response? Um, I, unfortunately, I haven't been able to have time <laughs> to create a lot of artworks. Uh, actually since a pandemic happened since late February. But uh, once in a while, you know, uh, I am trying to, I mean, even though I'm not able to create, uh, I am, you know, downloading everything that I'm experiencing. <laughs> and hopefully I could, you know, uh, I, I mean, I, I know I will uh, uh, utilize those ideas that I'm, you know, I'm receiving from the world right now and creating artworks that will be a response to, to that. Uh, and in general, um, my body of work, uh, I'm a portrait artist and, uh, and my mission, artistic uh, mission the past three years since I picked up art again back in 2016, so I guess the past four years, uh, has always been uh, creating portraits of Houstonians <laughs> and celebrating our diversity in general. So, uh, so even though my, my body of work is not that profound, not that large uh, in terms of number of pieces, uh, uh, 
you know, I've tried to celebrate everyone, uh, especially people like me, people like us, people of color, people, <laughs> people who represent the minorities uh, in this country. Uh, those have been my, my focus in terms of the portraits that I've created uh, in the past. And especially, you know, going forward, you know, I'm going to be continuing that. <laughs> That's my, life mission, my life's mission as an artist. Uh, create portraits of people that I meet in Houston <laughs> and just uh, add to, even though my voice is singular, uh, I, I still want to contribute in terms of adding my voice to the conversation uh, that we should have in this city, in this country, this world of celebrating our differences, celebrating our <laughs> diversity. That's definitely most inspiring and empowering too. And thank you for that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, just. And, uh, oh, yeah, sorry. Oh well. Uh, also, uh, actually, uh, early March, um, there was this Vietnamese hand washing song that <laughs> I don't know if you've heard of it. Uh, so that inspired me actually uh, to learn Vietnamese. <laughs> so the, since early March, I've been learning Vietnamese every day. <laughs> And actually, uh, uh, so I'm, I'm using this application, uh, a mobile app, you know, where you, you can learn a language and actually reach my 100 day mark <laughs> yesterday. And I'm keeping a book actually of, uh, uh, every, uh, I have a page for every single day <laughs> uh, of my Vietnamese studies. I don't think I can be fluent in it, but I figured uh, uh, it's good to have. Uh, <laughs> just uh, have an awareness of the language and because I have, you know, growing up, I've had several Vietnamese friends and I figured <laughs> that would be, it's, it's a high time for me to learn it. <laughs> wow, that's wonderful. You're picking up new language skills. Uh, yeah, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, I can say simple sentences, but yeah, I don't think I'll be fluent. <laughs> I need, uh, exp uh, what do you call that, uh, full immersion <laughs> to really learn it. Great. And um, can you share with us how your um, community of artists are doing at, as of now? Uh, you know, I see it in social media. People are uh, going, you know, uh, are trudging along in terms of creating artworks, uh, seeing the positives in what's happening. And I'm happy to see, too, that, you know, a lot of artists are responding to what's happening to the world. Earlier on, it was about, you know, the pandemic. Uh, and then the past three weeks, it's been about, you know, racial injustice and you know, histories behind that and just creating artworks that are responsive to that. And uh, so that's always inspiring. I mean, artists are usually the first ones to respond uh, to anything that happens <laughs> and it's I'm always uh, interested in seeing what the world of artists are doing whenever something significant is happening uh, in terms of uh, practical things uh, you know it's it, a lot of artists have you know experienced substantial um, what do you call it? Uh, financial difficulties <laughs> because of the pandemic. Uh, uh, a lot of my, the artists that I know of that have art studios, they're not able to open. They weren't able to open their studios to the public, so they lost that avenue of revenue. Uh, you know, face-to-face -face selling artwork. Uh, but uh, actually, earlier this last weekend, last Saturday, they opened Soy Yards again. So I saw some of my friends. Uh, through social media uh, that, you know, started to open their studios again, started to welcome people. Uh, but overall, you know, artists in general suffered <laughs> substantially and it's, it's tough to, to see. Um, but, you know, they're still creating artwork and they're seeing the positives in what's happening. And, and as what art, you know, what artists do, they just keep going. <laughs> But hopefully, you know, once everything settles down, uh, hopefully there's more 
I mean, people will flock again into, or will have more, uh, what do you call that, uh, extra revenue or extra money income to set aside for enriching their lives through art, buying art. <laughs> so. Yeah, definitely through this pandemic, we see that um, creativity has helped us connect more and the humanity more um, together. And that oh, creativity is something that we need of now, but we also, um, yeah, are suffering tremendously. <laughs> um, have you and your community been able to benefit from any of the relief funds? Um, uh, so given that, you know, I have a, a stable job right now, um, I, and you know, <laughs> I, I know for a fact that there's a lot, there's more, there's other artists there or other people in general who need it more than I do. So I've, I've, you know, subconscious, I've, I've, you know, consciously not applied for any t grants or reliefs or any types of assistance because you know those need to be provided to uh, other people who need it more than I do uh, so I'm thankful that you know I have a job that you know is keeping me afloat keeping me going and I recognize that uh, that gift and and I'm, I'm happy with that <laughs> As an artist, I don't live, I don't live beyond my means. So, what I have is I'm happy with, and I don't need more. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Um, and how about the uh, your professional side of lives? Um, we discussed you were working from home. You have been working from home since then, and how has that um, changed your lives? And can you share some of the interesting stories or some of the creative ways you um, discovered to, um, in your life? Oh, okay. Uh, so uh, at first, you know, when, you know, we, we got that, uh, that mandate to start working from home, uh, I was kind of uh, apprehensive about that with respect to the fact that I knew that there might be a potential for life and work to just easily blend. <laughs> and because I like, you know, I like the fact that, you know, I would be going to the office and then once I leave work, you know, I, I shut down everything uh, physically and mentally not working anymore <laughs> that, you know, that I would be transitioning to my personal life. Uh, the fact that I would be working from home uh, at the beginning, I, I was kind of, trepidatious about that and thinking, oh gosh, <laughs> uh, I will just continue working past, you know, the typical hours that I would work if I were just going to the office, you know, uh, nine to five, nine to six, nine, and then, <laughs> uh, and there have been times uh, where, you know, I've worked past what would I, I work past the hour that I would usually work to. Uh, the reason why is because you know, there's just a lot of projects happening. Uh, uh, so that's that. Uh, the work that I do is kind of sound, uh, count, uh, counter cyclical in terms of um, things that, you know, companies are experiencing uh, tightness in their expenditures, etc. Then we tend to get extra work in terms of more projects come up uh, that our company, or that my department that I'm in are winning. Uh, so there's a lot more work. <laughs> uh, so that's why I haven't, that's one of the reasons why I haven't been able to create during this past several months because uh, work has, has, work has seen an uptick from my perspective. <laughs> uh, in terms of uh, creativity in work, uh, and just that overall impact of COVID on work, I guess people, and generally people are realizing that they can perform their work from pretty much anywhere. <laughs> uh, so the concept of, you know, office space, physical office spaces is probably uh, being uh, uh, 
uh, what do you call that? Uh, being a question overall in a ab abstract way by society, <laughs> uh, because you know, remote working. You know, I I I work with people from other offices, from other cities, and you know, just doing it via you know uh, via Skype, uh, via Zoom, uh, via telephone. Uh, it's sufficient, and we're able to get our work done. And yeah, people are, it's definitely uh, something different. Uh, it, we do lose that human connection in a bit, in a way, because, uh, you know, going to the office, we see the person, we, we see our coworkers, we get to talk to them, we get to interact with them, we, we get to perceive and pick up on, on nonverbal things <laughs> much easier than through phone or through, <laughs> through Skype, through messages. And we lose that, uh, but we're able, to, in terms of productivity, we're still able to generally can do work, all of us, but we do lose that human connection. Yeah, how do you find that the, this increased um, kind of participation of technology in our lives uh, influenced our mentally, um, mental health? And for example, have you experienced any depression or anxiety during this period due to the isolation? I mean, in addition to what the social movements and the unjust we're seeing now. Yeah, so outside of, you know, uh, the social movements, uh, yeah, I have in terms of not, not profound depression, but uh, slight, uh, mo you know, moments where I just am very exhausted with life in general, <laughs> you know, because it's hard. Uh, even though I'm a very introvert person, I, I do, and, you know, I had to personally step back, uh, you know, constantly to recharge. Uh, there is that side of me that enjoys interacting with people <laughs> and, you know, you know, physically seeing them and and uh, you know, talking to them and picking up on other nonverbal cues that they may be picking, uh, that they may be conveying, uh, and just having that human connection, uh, it has been <laughs> tough, uh, but not so tough to the point that I I'm debilitated. But you know, I'm able to, you know, still connect to my friends via social media, via technology, and you know, once in a while we would socially distance. Uh, and meet up, <laughs> you know, go to a, a, an ice cream place, socially distant, distancing ourselves uh, and still physically seeing each other <laughs> and conversing. Uh, but it's definitely different. Uh, uh, and hopefully we're secure in our near future <laughs> so we can go back to where we were. But in the meantime, uh, Generally, I'm able to survive, and most of us are able to survive, you know, being distant. <laughs> and uh, I think it, it's okay, or also all right for us generally to have this moment where we have to, that we're being forced to separate. Um, it's forcing us to, it's forcing people to perform, you know, mental and spiritual resets. Uh, that they would not otherwise do uh, themselves. So, so I guess that's one slight benefit. <laughs> but overall, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's great to hear. Um, and you're staying positive. Um, yeah. And just wondering, have you had thoughts regarding earlier on that uh, the Asian American community has been attacked and including the current administration calling this the China virus or the Kung Flu at the, uh, back in March. Um, can you share some perspectives on that? Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, earlier on, especially uh, like even in like February, late February, uh, early March, when we were, when more and more cases are being uh, you know, recognized in the U.S., in our country right now here. Um, 
not that I, I can see to the future, but I kind of had a feeling that um, people in our community, the Asian American community, will get affected. Uh, back then, you know, I was thinking about the business, the local businesses uh, in terms of Asian restaurants, etc. So I was frequenting a lot of restaurants uh, during that time and telling my my circles <laughs> to to be aware to pat you know to you know patronize those businesses um, and also when things started to get worse in terms of more and more cases are you know uh, uh, spreading in the country uh, and then you know we start hearing the rhetoric from the top levels of the government uh, and from the general populace, population in general, uh, it, it was kind of uh, uh, depressing to hear that we were, you know, our Asian community in general is being targeted for being, you know, and being blamed uh, for this pandemic, this virus. Uh, so actually, that's one of the reasons why, that's one of my early form of resistance to that was uh, learning an Asian language and that's how I picked up Vietnamese <laughs> uh, and what and also I got inspired by that song but yeah and you know I wanted I learned that I picked up learning an Asian language another Asian language uh, as a form of rebellion as, and as a form of support for our community uh, and yeah, it's, and then, you know, as the pandemic worsened, we, we see, we hear news where Asian nurses, et cetera, are being targeted, being inappropriately uh, discriminated for just being who they are uh, in the workplace, you know, by their patients, et cetera. Um, so that was tough to hear and read about in the news. And, and personally, I, I can't do much about that in terms of just being, providing my voice and my my connections and spreading. <laughs> That's all I can do right now, spread the word. That's all what we can do if we, we're not in positions of power to affect any kind of uh, change. But... Uh, Thank you for sharing us with us your voices. It's um, very um, helpful and very empowering indeed. Um, how about the um, social uh, structure through this pandemic? How has it uh, revealed um, the way that um, the system is? For example, we are seeing the population who are in poverty impacted more in this oh. uh, virus pandemic. Um, can you share your perspectives on that? Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, the fact that you know we're hearing and getting those reports uh, and studies w that indicate that the majority of the people affected by the virus, people who you know, contracted, people who eventually die from it, are people in the minorities. You know, people of color, people in less uh, affluent areas of the country or even the less you know the the more you know the less economically funded areas of cities uh, it is kind of a it's depressing to hear because that just goes to show how systemic how pervasive uh, racial uh, inequities has been and continues to be uh, carried out in this country. Um, and it is, it's tough to see. Um, and it's sobering. And I guess what's going to i hope as, as an idealist i hope that 
coupled with the conversations that we're having right now, especially the past three weeks, uh, things might hopefully will uh, happen to, you know, correct those types of inequities. Um, I just, you know, hope that more and more from the top levels of the government are recognizing and acknowledging uh, that sort of uh, disparity in people who are who were affected by the virus itself physically. And hopefully, I hope that future governments and people, future people in authority, can you know, right those wrongs and, and, you know, reform them or enact reforms that will, you know, uh, prevent that sort of disparity from happening again. Uh, I'm, you know, practically speaking, I'm, I'm not sure if that will happen <laughs> because it's just very systemic uh, and it's, you know, it's happened in centuries and it's, hard to you know make those types of changes i mean it will be a slow progress but hopefully progress will be made uh, but what's hopeful is you know more and more people of the upcoming generations uh, are more vocal and are more vocal specifically towards pointing out uh, instances of inequities so you know future generations will be more i hope we'll have hopefully have more momentum to actually make changes <laughs> so. well, that's wonderful sharing of positive um upbeat notes um towards the end of the interview uh -huh. um, I guess that's my last question. Uh, what do you think we can come out of this pandemic stronger as a community? What do you think we can do? Oh, okay. Uh, in terms of specifically the Asian community? Yes. Okay. Uh, um, so overall, um, because of the, the wave that's happening in the world, uh, in terms of social justice, um, every it seemed like you know it's you know of course centered around Black Lives Matter and it should be because you know they've experienced the most egregious forms of racial action or you know racially insensitive actions towards them in history, so it should be about them and um, but positive you know, uh, things that are being carried uh, in its coattails are people in general are just being more vocal and being more aware and being more, uh, uh, being more vocal in terms of, you know, voicing out inequities in general and, you know, yeah, I've also seen because I'm part of some, you know, Asian local communities and people in general, people are responding to the call of, you know, speaking out and standing up. And so I think that's going to carry, that's a positive thing that is coming out of the pandemic and the social movement uh, together. Um, people in our community, Asian community, are finding the courage to be more vocal and that I'm, I'm hoping and I, I believe that that will carry forward you know into the future uh, people will be more aware of each other in um, Asian communities and so and be being more open to supporting each other even though you know we're just one Asian community there's different subsets of us and those different subsets are recognizing each other and going forward i'm i hope and i believe that there will be more uh more support more within those subsets of the asian community in general 
because you know, from my community, the Philippine, Filipino group, uh, um, you know, I'm, you know, I'm surrounded by other Filipinos who are, you know, are very vocal uh, about, you know, and standing out, standing up. Uh, and I'm seeing that from other subsets of the Asian community. And, this. and it, it could only go up from, it could only grow from there going forward. And that's the, that's, I'm seeing that as a, a very hopeful thing for the future. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm such an, an idealist, but, <laughs> but uh, that's, I guess that's just how my, my mind is, my wi is wired. That's amazing. That's great. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for sharing your perspectives. Well, I, I, yeah, do you have anything else to share? Um, well, or, no, uh, thank you for, you know, hearing me out or, you know, inviting me to to share my perspectives of the past few months and always great to talk to you and uh, I'm thankful uh, for the HAAA for <laughs> hearing my voice uh, because you know I'm just one of many uh, voices in our city and uh, thank you for hearing me out. <laughs> thank you on behalf of uh, Houston Asian American Archives. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Anne. <laughs>